again, this is position. This is a total body thing. Okay? And what would you say about this x ray? Oh, we look at the telescope. Well, that is bottom column is curved a little bit. Right. Now look at the difference between here from the lateral aspect of the line to the medial aspect on this side and from here to here. So he's not straight. But this is one that's shot right here in the middle. So you don't get an adequate picture of the KB or the chest because if you, if you want a chest x-ray, you should shoot a chest x-ray so that the beam goes straight down. If you want a KUB, you should shoot a KUB so that the beam goes straight down. This is an example of trying to do all of it. Not the baby weighs 500 grams. It's not really an issue. But um, I have a baby that weighs 2 kilos, 3 kilos, 4 kilos. It is an issue. The beam has to go, it's in the center, and so it scatter shots. Uh, at the top, scatter shots at the bottom. So it gives you a false impression of the ribs being abnormal, of there being abnormal heart size, it's extremely rotated, of there being atelectasis over here. This this x-ray you have to repeat. You cannot make any determination whatsoever based on this x-ray. Look at this x-ray. Sure. Gotta look at everything, you know. Of course, our kid. It's a little far. It is. It's in the right main stand. And what has happened? We've got atelectasis or palsy. As we all know, when the trachea, when it bi immediately after bifurcation, the airway that goes to the right upper lobe comes off immediately after the bifurcation. So if the ET tube is down too far at all, then you will get right upper lobe atelectasis. Oftentimes, even before we get left side in our practices. Now, let's look at the x-ray as a whole. Severely rotated, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This side is twice as wide as this side. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to really make any determination on that, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what is this? This is a lead. This is a lead. This is a lead. Right, they should have moved some of those leads. Can you see? Can you see a line? Okay. Right here. The line is in good placement. It's a UAC, and it is. It means it's about T9, T8, somewhere in that range, T10. The normal placement for UAC, or best placement for UAC, is about T10. Think of the T7. Some people say T6, but optimal place, placement for UAC is T10 to T8. Okay. And we'll count those. We have a couple of x rays. They're much better x rays, so we can count them and see exactly what we're doing. All right. Now, let's look at this x ray. Let's look at placement. It's a little hard. Look at our spinal cord, nice and straight, right? Maybe a little bit rotated, but not too bad. A little rotated. But what do you see? Air bronchograms. It's real, almost white out here. And we talked about that if your alveoli are alectatic, if they're filled with blood, if they're filled with pus, that, or if they're filled with fluid, it will look white like this, right? Okay, so now we have air bronchograms that are completely visible. This is called third generation air bronchograms. Because the alveoli are atelectatic or else they're filled with blood or, or fluid or pus, air can't get into the alveoli, so it over distends the air bronchograms. Over distends the bronchi, and therefore you have air bronchograms. And that's why they show up. This is how a memory disease. Now, can you see the diaphragms? Just very quickly. Can you see the heart? Mm -hmm. Can't see the heart at all, can you? Well, this is classic for how a membrane disease before receiving surfactant. Okay. Um, 
you really can't differentiate between your levels of the diaphragm, you can't find the heart. How about the ET tube? Do you think that ET tube placement is okay? Okay, what would you do for that ET tube? How much? All right. Um, the, you would have to measure, okay, because you don't know the size of this baby, you don't know the weight of this baby, so if you were on the computer, you would measure. Now, what about the line? Remember, you always have to look at everything on every x ray. That's right. Where should the line be? If it needs to be up here, then you can't use it, right? But a UAC, you can use a low line UAC, and it can be in good position, low line, if it's at um, L3 to L5. This is T12, 5, 4, 3. It needs to come down a little bit. It needs to be right here in this interspace. Okay. Why, if you have a low line line, why do you want it to be at L3 to L5? Below L3 down to L5. The renal arteries come off right at L3. Therefore, every time you withdraw blood or push blood in, or push any type of drugs in through the UHC, it's going directly to a renal artery. Alright, what do we see on this x-ray? Let's look at it. Let's look at our position. A little bit rotated, not severely. It's a little high, so air bomb the ground. Can't see the heart, can't see the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Again, this is how the brain disease for the very same reason that the IBLI are abductated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, <laughs> can you see the air bronchograms here? Mm -hmm. Not many, you can see a little bit of them. Right? Mm -hmm. Not much, but you can see the stem. Okay? You can see air down here. Can you see the line? Mm -hmm. See the line right there? And this is one way to determine. Some people will have difficulty determining if you have a UAC or a UVC in place. The UAC always has to go down. When you insert it through the umbilicus through the umbilical artery, it always has to go down to the iliac, make the curve back up into the Aorta. When the vein goes in, and we'll look at that, when the vein goes in, it goes in and the, the umbilical vein goes straight up from the umbilical, straight up this way. It does not go down at all. Okay? So that's the way to differentiate. Many times the vein also has to go through the liver a little bit. Occasionally it won't go, it has to go through the ductus venosus. Occasionally, depending on the rotation, it looks like it's going straight. So, but one, one way to look at it, to determine on the x-ray, is that a UAC always has to go down toward the iliac and make the curve up into the aorta. Um, fetal and neonatal circulation. Now, this is a baby who got a chest x-ray because this baby had pneumonia. I said, how do I know this baby had pneumonia? Because we had a tracheal aspirate that grew an organism. Can you differentiate pneumonia on the chest x-ray in the newborn from how many brain disease, that type of thing? No. Babies don't have, newborns don't have new, things like pneumococcal pneumonia, that type of thing, where one side is affected more so than the other side. In newborns, if they have pneumonia, it's usually homogenous. It usually affects the whole lung. Group B strep cannot be group B strep pneumonia cannot be differentiated from Halloween brain disease. It absolutely cannot be. That's why every baby that has respiratory distress in a newborn is started on antibodies. Period. He requires oxygen. He's started on antibodies. Okay. Because on the X-ray, you cannot differentiate between a pneumonia and Halloween brain disease or even RDS2. Okay. Now, 